You got it. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. So my sure to let you know this was the best Pinocchio ever that he's ever seen. So I wanted to ask you, what is it that you would like your audience goers to walk away with this Pinocchio? Uh, I think uh, what I love about this movie is that it's got so many morals. And obviously you're all parents, so you can relate to a lot of, of what happens between Geppetto and Pinocchio. But but what I love is that it's not just them two. There's There's three main father and son figures and... So there's the Podesta and Candlewick, but then there's also Volpe and Spazzatura. So, so you can see throughout the film there's 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 um there's these these relationships and they get into conflicts and and at some points Count Volpe's angry at Spazzatura or the Podesta is saying to Candlewick that that he's a disappointment. But I think you've got to watch the movie and take away that in the end. Geppetto realizes he loves Pinocchio and that he is his son and that he is a real boy and that um, your parents might call you things like a burden or treat you wrong, but in the end, they are there to love you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, Carrie, would you want to ask the next question? Good morning. So Pinocchio is a boy or a puppet of many different personality characteristics throughout the movie. We get to see him being kind of sassy and innocent to being brave. Um, what is the one personality characteristic that you enjoyed portraying the most throughout the movie? That's a, that's a very good question. Uh, my favorite characteristic of Pinocchio is, is how loud and energetic and boisterous he is. Um, as much as I love having to fake cry and scream and shout. I love just just sort of being the innocent young boy that Pinocchio is because the thing is, is that that was me two or three years ago. So I could relate to him in a lot of ways. And and I love when I when I make those silly and innocent remarks, like when when the cricket tells Pinocchio that that Carlo's dead and he's like, how do you lose someone for four or five years? And I, I love the lines like that, that to really show how Pinocchio is just, he's just come into this world. Thank you. Coraline? Hi, Gregory. The movie is amazing. I loved it. Um, I was just wondering, what was it like doing voice acting for you? Uh, I've I always wanted to be in an animation. So I've been in a few live action movies, a few commercials and a TV show. Uh, and I said to my mom, I want my next thing. I'd love to be in an animation because I find it so fascinating how no matter what character you're playing, when you're when you're behind the 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 microphone and you're not actually there, even though you're not the character that you're trying to be, you sort of have to become him or her. So I found that that when that even though it's an animation and even though I'm not Pinocchio and I don't look like him. Uh, I found that that I had to sort of become him and and try to to take on his personality. And so, even though you don't have a costume and and the set and the people around you, because a lot of the time I was in the booth on my own, the awesome thing is that you're sort of still being that character, and you're not just the voice of it. You actually are it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Nicole, do you want to go? Hi, Gregory. Uh, love the film. And I'm curious, you had to voice two characters in the film. And I wanted to know what was the hardest part for you in voicing these characters over the span of a couple of years that you guys recorded the film? So uh, there were a lot of challenges um, when I was recording for such a long amount of time. One of the main ones is that as as any uh, preteen boy, my voice is gonna eventually break. So uh, that was that was a challenge for the directors and producers because we had to get everything as quick as possible. And especially with the singing, I'm I'm so relieved that that it's finally over because um, I've always loved singing, but it's so unnatural for me to hit those high notes. So I had to have a voice coach 
and it was for about six weeks but but I'm so happy that that it did get to be my voice because they were contemplating if if it was going to have to be a, a choir boy because I was I was close but I wasn't there but I put the the hard work in and and eventually um I did reach those notes and I got to do that those songs you did fantastic thank you thank you Monica you can ask your question Hi, Gregory. I just want to say that this is a very interesting take on a very classic fairy tale. And you got to work with one of my favorite directors, Guillermo del Toro. So tell me how cool was working with him. It was it was honestly such an honor to work with Guillermo. Um it was it was like a walk in the park. The the way he does stuff is it's so awesome because uh sometimes I would look at a line and no matter how many times I say it, I just I can't deliver it. It's there's challenges sometimes, but Guillermo could give me the perfect techniques and and he's he's like a magician. He's not just a director. He's 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 truly magic how how he manages to to come up with these these prompts to to help me because it's a lot harder to to work with kids and especially I was 10 years old. So it would probably be different um if if I was recording today. So for Guillermo to to be able to be so versatile and work with so many different people it was it was just it was so awesome to work with him well you can see that there was synergy there because the movie was amazing thank you Cami hi Gregory I'm Cami from the mama diaries.com I absolutely loved the movie you know there's a lot of different versions of Pinocchio but this one was hands down my favorite that I've ever seen so I'd love to know, what do you think makes this version so unique from the others? I think what makes this version so unique is that it's not just an animation that it's made to sort of make money. It's it's really a beautiful story. And I think uh, what Guillermo said is that he tried to make it as naturalistic as possible. Um, and it's so pure, like when Pinocchio's nose grows the leaves, the leaves grow out and branches come out instead of just going in a straight line. Um, and so I just think it's 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 so awesome that 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 that's the way he's done that. And he's he's also it's also a little bit more creepy. Um, but I think that it makes the movie a lot more interesting and 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 beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Hi, Gregory. I'd love to know, did you have a favorite um, scene from the film once you saw it finished or maybe a favorite scene that you recorded? That's that's a very good question as well. Um, so I've got a favorite scene that I did and then a favorite other scene. So the favorite one that I did was was towards the end when I had to lie to make the nose grow so that everyone could get out of the dogfish and and I, I just completely loved the concept of that. I thought it was it was so awesome. And and I was speaking to Patrick, the writer, and I, I was just saying to him, how do you come up with this stuff? Because it's so clever. Um and so so I loved I loved the final product of of how that worked because he he completely lies and it's it's also really sweet because when Geppetto realizes he's lying and he's saying that he hates him, it means quite the opposite and Pinocchio is basically saying that he loves Geppetto and and then my other favorite scene um it was actually a song I really really like uh Christoph Waltz who plays Count Volpe I love his song um about we were we were a king um I just think it's it's an awesome scene how 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 he how Spazzatura goes up with balloons and he's in the sky and he he grabs the the shotgun and shoots it down and and he's going through the magazine and I just think how it's in the carnival and it's throughout the song, you're seeing the whole of the carnival and it's a great character introduction. So I really love that scene. Thank you so much. Amanda. Hi, Gregory, I'm Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms. And you talked a little bit about the songs in, that you've done and you had some amazing musical numbers, you know, ones that were 
emotional to ones that were hilarious talking about farts and poops, which was my personal favorite. But <laughs> so I just wanted to know how it was like to record these songs with uh, Alexander Deplet. Alexandra, he's he's such an incredible man to work with. Um, he's he's a very very big perfectionist. Um, which is obviously great for the viewers, but for me it was a big 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 challenge. Um, I'm very happy that that now I think him being a perfectionist and making me sing everything is new to me almost eighty times. Um, I'm very happy with how it worked out, but no, it was awesome working with him. I've the same with Guillermo and acting is that I've learned these vocal techniques and how to hold certain notes that that I'm just going to use for the rest of my life. So I'm th so thankful of this. Well, it was incredible. It turned out terrific. So thank you. Thank you. Jaina. Hi, Gregory. I'm Jana with whiskeyandsunshine.com. Um, so this is your first uh, big voice role, obviously. And you did, you talked a little bit about how long it was in the process of doing this um, recording because it took so long, but what was your favorite part of the actual process for the voice recording work? I, my favorite part, I really just love being in the booth and, and I've met so many incredible people over the, over the way and, and over the journey, but just being in the booth and getting to show so many emotions, it was, it was so much fun. And that's one of the things I love about Pinocchio is that he's almost every emotion you can think of. Anyone you can name, Pinocchio goes through that in the film. So being able to, to scream, cry, and sing of joy in the same, in the same recording session was, was awesome. Thank you. Melissa? Hello, Gregory. Um, I just finished watching this last night and I honestly think it was my favorite movie of the year. I honestly do. I was telling my, I watched it with my parents actually and I, I was just nailed. So my question is through the casting process, I'm sure it was a long casting process. Could you tell us how uh, it was getting cast as this iconic character and how that went about? So it's actually quite a funny story. It started off, um, and it was just an animation. There was no title. It was it was sort of anonymous because it was a big secret. Um, and so my mom just, she emailed me a list and it was one line and then I had to say it. Sad, happy, angry, excited, confused, curious. And and I was all for it. Um, as I said earlier, I'd always wanted to be in an animation. So I put all the effort in and and waited and a few weeks later I got an email saying call back for Pinocchio and I was really confused I was I was saying to my mom do you mean the first audition or was this a mistake or or is this a joke um and I was I was completely shocked because even to get a call back for for Pinocchio is it's such an honor um and so I really I was desperate for this part I put all my effort in and and the final audition I actually I went to a recording studio in London with with one of the producers, Alex, and I had to say a few lines and then sing a song. Um, and then and then one day I got I got the part and I was at my friend's house and we I didn't have a phone at the time because I was very young. And so his mum, my friend's mum walked in and she's like, your mum's on the phone. And I was kind of worried because, I mean, I was on a play date. That's, that doesn't really happen. But but I picked up the phone and it was actually my brother. And he said to me, Greg, can I call you Pinocchio? And I, I knew I got the role and I was jumping up and screaming and, and here we are today. I love that, congrats to you. Thank you. Tracy? I wanna join in with everyone about what a tremendous movie this was. And um, we've spoken about a lot of the, the deep topics and and the great um, morals and I wanted to know what you came away from the film with if you felt like that you grew from making the film I think um the, the all the all the movies that I've ever loved um are ones with a big deep moral so 
it was so cool that Pinocchio has this as well because um, it's it's a story about loss and the grief of of a child or or just anyone and and in the beginning it shows you how how Geppetto he's just broken from from losing his son and then and then it's and then it shows the relationship and love between between a parent and a child it doesn't have to be father and son it could be mother and son or mother and daughter um and so showing that and showing how the relationship is never perfect you would never see um someone and they said they've never had an argument with their parents in their life but but it's really really beautiful how how it how it portrays that and mirrors over different character duos in the film and and I'm just I'm just very happy that that I got to be part of this incredible story. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alicia. Hi, Gregory. What would you say is your favorite part about being able to be the voice of Carlo as well as Pinocchio in this new version of Pinocchio? Uh, my favorite part about being Carlo and Pinocchio is that um, it sort of it shows a really good resemblance between the two of them, because Mark and Guillermo um, initially told me that I was going to be voicing both of them, and the reason was they didn't want me to put on a different voice for Carlo. They wanted them to sound the same, because the whole thing is about how Carlo dies and Carlo's soul gets taken and put into Pinocchio, and that's that's why you could see one of the songs Pinocchio sings in the carnival is the same tune as as uh Carlo's mother as the song that 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 she taught Carlo so so yeah thank you thank you we have time for a few more questions I'm just gonna start from the top here Carrie did you all have another question to ask yes hello again I love the songs in the movie. The Chow Papa is absolutely beautifully sung. Um, my kids, they love the poop song. I don't know what it's called, but the poop song. I wanted to know what your favorite song was in the movie to perform. My favorite song to perform was actually the Fatherland March. Uh, I think it starts when Chow Papa finishes. Um, because I remember I would be in the booth and I'd be I'd be marching like this um, and going like this. Um, and and I really loved. I I got to shout and really put loads of energy into it. Um, so that was my favorite one to film. But my actual favorite one to listen to was I said this earlier, but Count Volpe's song about uh, being a king once that 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 Christoph Waltz sings. I I actually think that when that comes out, I'm going to add it to my playlist because I really really love that song. Thank you. I've got time for one more question and I'm going to ask a question here. What was it like in the booth process? Like how you were working with Guillermo and did you ever go into the booth with any one of your actors? Yes. Yeah, so um, when you're recording an animation, you're not always with other people, which is, which is one of the challenges, but I did get the honor to work with David Bradley, who plays Geppetto. And I got to sit side by side him, which, for some of the scenes, it made it so much easier because it's very hard having a conversation with someone when when you're speaking to yourself. And and then I also got to work with Finn Wolfhard, who plays Candlewick, which is such an awesome thing. Um, in the scene where where Pinocchio and and Candlewick are in the bunker and they're having the discussion about about uh, are you scared of the war? And and that was that was a very meaningful conversation. So to be able to sit by him and actually look at him while I'm saying it made it, I think, a lot more um, natural for the viewers to watch. Great, thank you. 